Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the outstanding pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. I guess we've got an international edition of Horse Center. Yeah, hey, Matt, uh, you're right. Mm -hmm. How often do uh, shows like this talk about things in Saudi Arabia and Arkansas? That's uh, it, it can't be more than once a year, I'll tell you that. Yeah, that's for sure. We also got big money on the line. Uh, not only is the Rebel the richest Kentucky Derby prep at $1.25 million uh, this week at uh, Oakland Park, of course, but the Saudi Cup is the richest race in the world. It's $20 million, Matt. I kind of hate that this is in Saudi Arabia and not America. Uh, but, uh, and I've said this before in the post flight line area, there's, there's no flight line in there, but this is literally the best dirt field or maybe the best field that's been assembled in, in, in a, in a few years, honestly. Yeah. I think there's no question about that. And, and I agree with boy, I sure wish this race was, uh, in our country for uh, for many different reasons, and, and it is a rich race. The winner gets $10 million. Fifth place, Brian, gets a million. That's not bad. Fifth place, a million bucks. Not, not bad work if you can get it, as they say. Let's jump into the field map. The Saudi Cup, of course, nine furlongs over in Saudi Arabia on Saturday. Uh, the Americans have come over with a very strong contingent. Looking at our top older dirt horses in America here, most of them are over there for the Saudi Cup. And of course, it starts with White Abario, Matt. White Abario is a five-year-old son of race day. I tell you what, he was a grade one winner back in the day in the Florida Derby just about two years ago. Uh, but then he, he pretty much, I think it's safe to say for that level of, of early victory in his career, he's kind of fizzled until he went to the barn of Rick Dutrow, and things turned around quickly. Yeah, he is back, uh, uh, and impressively with the, with the grade one wins in the Whitney and the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, he is breaking from post position one, but please keep in mind if you are planning on wagering on the Saudi Cup that you will be wagering by the program numbers. The program numbers, I think, were arranged alphabetically. They are not the post position numbers. So please make sure of that uh, if you are betting. Yeah, that's a good point, Matt. Uh, I think White Barrio, well, yeah, alphabetically, he'll be quite far on the outside uh, betting the betting number. But the post position is number one. Mm -hmm. He's got some speed. Uh, he, he's pretty tactical. I think there's a lot of speed in here, Matt, and, and maybe the one post position would be a tough spot for White Barrio uh, drawing the rail on Saturday. We shall see. Let's talk about some more big name Americans, though, in the field. And, and it's more speed, frankly. Uh, number five is Saudi Crown. Saudi Crown, of course, is trained by Brad Cox. Four-year-old son of Always Dreaming, Matt, he, he failed uh, last fall in the Breeders' Cup Classic when he faded far out of the picture. That's his only bad race of his career, and uh, sandwiched around that tenth place finish in the Breeders' Cup Classic, are a couple of nice wins. Yes, absolutely. Uh, he won the Pennsylvania Derby, and uh, when I was there after that race, uh, uh, the the ownership group uh, made it clear at that point that their goal for this horse is and has been the Saudi Cup. So uh, good for them. He has made it, and and. Uh, after the Breeders' Cup, he had a nice prep race win at Fairgrounds. Yeah, I'm going to say it again. That, that, that prep race uh, win uh, was uh, not that long ago, which gives him an advantage in recency, at least, over several horses in this field, several big names in this field. But I'm going to say it again. There looks to be a lot of speed. Saudi Crown is a generally a speed horse. So you have to think about that when you're handicapping the race. Another big American name, Matt, in fact, he's a classic winner, is the number seven National Treasure. And this will be Bob Baffert's only runner in the field. National Treasure, of course, a four-year-old son of Quality Road who won the Preakness last spring, Matt. But lately, he's proven to be more than just a one-hit wonder with that Preakness win. 
Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, those two big wins uh, in the Pegasus World Cup and the Preakness uh, are are certainly impressive. And the win in the Breeders' Cup certainly got me thinking uh, more positively about National Treasure. Yeah, uh, the Pegasus World Cup was, of course, the win. The Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile just missed uh, uh, an impressive performance there behind uh, what became the horse of the year, Cody's Wish, when he was second by a nose in that Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. As Matt says, a nice win uh, in, in January in the Pegasus World Cup, a game win for National Treasure. Another speed horse, Matt, that's becoming a refrain here as we're talking about a lot of the top contenders in the Saudi Cup. Uh, let's talk about maybe the Japanese contingent, because I said the American contingent was strong. The Japanese contingent certainly is strong. Maybe the preferred uh, uh, Japanese horse of the bunch is the 13, Derma Sodagaki. Uh, he gets that reputation off of a very good second last fall in the Breeders' Cup Classic. It remains to be seen who'll be uh, a preferred among the Japanese uh, horses, but uh, we, we pegged Derma Sodagaki as a possible second choice behind White a barrio off that big performance in the Breeders' Cup Classic. He hasn't run since. I, I heard he had a little bit of an eye injury, uh, maybe wrestling with uh, another horse on the plane over to Saudi Arabia, but uh, they seem to be all systems go for the very classy son of mine, you biscuits. Yes, Brian, uh, uh, you mentioned the second in the Breeders' Cup Classic. He won the UAE Derby last year was third in the Saudi Derby last year. That was on the way to finishing sixth in the Kentucky Derby, probably, uh, you know, what uh, most Americans would know of uh, or grab onto for Derma Sotogaki. Yeah, yeah, Derma Sotogaki. It's interesting that his last two races are actually in America. Uh, you mentioned the, this, the Saudi Derby last year, lightly race horse, and he ran a good race in the Saudi Derby, but you could see he was a better horse the following month, winning the UAE Derby uh, for fun last year. Um, the Derby, he got off to a slow start, and he's not the type of horse that wants to come from the clouds. So I think he has a little bit of an excuse in the Derby. But the Breeders' Cup Classic, of course, lightly raced three-year-old off a layoff, ran huge to be second that day. More good Japanese horses, Matt. Let's drop back down to the inside. Number three is Lemon Pop. This is a six-year-old son of Lemon Drop Kid. Lemon Drop Kid, we often think with distance. He, he was a Belmont Stakes winner, the sire. Uh, also turf. But Lemon Pop actually has been, for most of his career, a sprinter on the dirt. Yeah, and interestingly, uh, uh, Lemon Pop is uh, owned by Godolphin, but has been primarily doing his running in Japan. But, you know, uh, uh, Godolphin's got so many good horses, they spread them out literally all over the world. Uh, um, Lemon Pop was a champion in Japan and has won uh, 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 several races in a row now, I think four or so, but uh, has quite an, quite an excellent record in his 14 starts with 10 wins, two grade ones uh, in Japan, most recently won the Champions Cup beating a couple of other horses from Japan that are in this field. Yeah, I think those other horses will be long shots, but uh, a lot of interesting things here with Lemon Pop. Uh, he was beaten uh, not that long ago or, or almost a year ago when he went to Dubai, and that was when he was still running in sprint races. He had been basically a mile or less throughout his career. Uh, he was uh, beaten in the Dubai Golden Shaheen, I believe it's called, the rich sprint on uh, World Cup Day. But uh, yeah, uh, back in Japan, back to winning, he stretched out for that Champions Cup, which was in December, went right to the lead from a far outside post and uh, made all the running. You could see a horse making a run in there, and he had plenty left in the stretch. That was his first race at nine furlongs. This will be his second race at nine furlongs after never having been more than a mile. And Matt, I will say it again, more speed here in the Saudi Cup. Uh, the other Japanese horse, of course, we have to talk about is the 11. Uh, that's uh, Ushbar Tassaro, Matt, a six-year-old son with plenty of Sunday silence or, or, or fever blood in, in his veins. Uh, of course, I'm always going to talk about Sunday silence a little bit. But this is a horse who really his career took off when he made the uh, transition from turf to dirt. 
and he's won most of his starts on on dirt. Uh, he was beaten uh, last time in or two starts ago in the Breeders' Cup Classic. He he didn't quite have the big kick uh, in that one where he finished fifth. Not a terrible performance, but fifth in the Breeders' Cup Classic. I think we're going to see some odds because of that. Uh, he sandwiched those two with two wins on the dirt in Japan, including his last one, which was in December. But of course, we best know him as the Dubai World Cup, powerful Dubai World Cup winner from last March. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And most recently won a, a Group 1 race in Japan, the Tokyo. Yeah, the Tokyo was 10 furlongs, and that might be his preferred distance. So you wonder if 9 furlongs is a little bit short for him. But on the other hand, he, out of, out of the first six horses I talked about, He's the one horse you know who really wants to rally, and the fact that there is a lot of speed in this race could be good for that uh, classy, uh, classy Japanese horse. All right, we we, we talked about uh, probably the American favorites. We talked about the Japanese favorites. Let's start talking about some other pretty big names in here, Matt. I guess you could call the two isolate uh, no longer an American, but of course. He was an American for much of his career. Just like Lemon Pop, he did his best running sprinting. Uh, Isolate, though, was a multiple stakes winner here in America before he went over to Dubai. And his career's taken off in Dubai with a couple nice wins uh, last year. Yeah, uh, he raced in the United States uh, from 2020 to 2023, picking up second wins uh, and and, uh, uh, now. Uh, owned and based in uh, uh, in the Middle East, uh, got two Group Two wins uh, it, at Maidan this year. Yeah, yeah, last year uh, or, or going back into late last year, and of course we first really I think I think he was known as a good American sprinter, but he didn't stand out in America. But we really uh, saw some class when he won the Godolphin Mile last March. That was his breakthrough, breakthrough performance. And uh, uh, he uh, followed that up recently with a uh, easy win uh, mm-hmm. in the Al, one of the Al Maktoum Challenge races. Uh, I, I believe that was late, late last year, just before New Year's. So isolated, classy horse, um, more more speed. Uh, another horse who nine furlongs is a question mark. He's been winning uh, uh, easier races, shorter races. The Godolphin Mile though showed some class. Isolate another one to to watch. We can get back to some more American uh, horses who are pretty well known. How about a couple of hard-hitting sons of mine shaft? We'll start with Senor Buscador, a six-year-old son of mine shaft. Matt, he's uh, he's a horse I always liked. I'm not sure if nine furlongs is his best distance. He might like to rally just a little bit shorter. But I tell you, nine furlongs is a distance that still is well within his scope. He likes to rally, as I mentioned, so much speed in here. He's coming off a nice performance. Yeah, a couple of nice second-place finishes recently, uh, one of them in the Pegasus World Cup and the other one in the Cigar Mile. But, it, you know, it's been a while to go back and find uh, a victory. And then even so, maybe this field is just a little too tough for the senior. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, buying, I'm not buying what you're selling there, Matt. Uh, he beat good horses in the San Diego uh, late July last year, and, and I think he stretched out to a mile and a quarter and was uh, maybe not quite good enough at a mile and a quarter. But I think dropping down in distance a little bit, he's been better. Muddy track when he was second in the Cigar Mile, and last time he ran a big race in the uh, Pegasus, just uh, uh, narrowly losing out to National Treasure again. The race sets up right for him. I think Senor Buscador is a threat in here. Uh, More speed in another American. Johnny Velasquez is uh, over there. A lot of uh, top American riders will be over in Saudi Arabia on Saturday. Of course, follow the money, Matt. Hoist the Gold has shown a lot of speed as as he's become uh, a little bit more than a sprinter. Another hard-knocking son of mine, Shaft. He's five years old, and he's proven pretty good of late as well. Yeah, got a, he won that cigar mile that I mentioned recently, uh, just before, and uh, uh, was fourth in the Pegasus World Cup. We've got him at 20, 20 to 1 on the morning line. This is a big field. Somebody's got to be a big price, Brian. 
Yeah, there's there's going to be good horses with with nice odds, and and, and Senor Buscador and Hoist the Gold are two examples of that. Hoist the Gold, of course, set the pace or or, or was set a pressured pace in the Pegasus World Cup. As Matt mentioned before that, he was a, a winner on that wet track at Aqueduct in the Cigar Mile, his biggest win to date. He won the Phoenix, uh, a graded stakes at Keeneland four starts back before uh, getting beat in the Breeders' Cup Sprint as well. But definitely another horse who's really uh, shown his speed as he stretched out his distances like this. Another American who's no longer American, I guess, is number nine, Defunded. He's never run anywhere but America, but Defunded was re recently purchased by Saudi Interest Matt. And I hear the owner, I think he's a, a wealthy uh, Saudi owner, uh, is uh, going to give away a lot of money if Defunded uh, wins on Saturday. Okay. Well, that would be, that would be nice. Uh, yeah. Off since September, Brian, that's a, that's a little bit telling being able to, uh, uh run successfully in this kind of field uh, off of, uh, uh, that many months, uh, uh, of a layoff. But anyway, uh, uh, second in the awesome again, winner of the Hollywood gold cup, uh, former Baffert runner. Yeah, he's he's been a Baffert runner all along. The six-year-old son of dialed in two times grade two time grade one winner, a horse you can't ignore if he runs his race. His last race, as you mentioned, was September 30 when he was second in the, the grade one awesome again at this nine for a long distance. Interesting, Louis Saez is going to be over there riding number nine to fund it. Matt, I think we I think we uh covered all the uh, big participants in here, you can tell that this is, if we're talking about to fund it and hoist the gold and send your buscador and isolate as long shots, uh, you can tell what a deep and, and quality dirt field this is. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And, and, and a tough race to handicap in that there's so much quality in the field and, and so many of them uh, non-American base where, you know, it's hard to compare those runners to the Americans. And, hey, I haven't even seen any past performances. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I've been watching videos and doing my best to understand exactly what the horses have been up to lately. But uh, a lot of Americans in the field, we, we mentioned basically six or seven, depending on what you're talking about with the funded and isolate. And uh, it's the two of the three big Japanese horses have run in America. So you get a little bit of feel there too. Uh, I'm basing my handicapping on this race though, because I, I just feel like there's so much speed in the race. That'll be my uh, uh, major handicapping uh, thought going into the Saudi cup. All right, let's get to the Derby trail because we got uh, a pretty big one. As I mentioned, $1.25 million being offered at Oakland. Oakland is offering big money for these preps. We've seen the Smarty Jones. We've seen the Southwest. Of course, we got the Arkansas Derby uh, coming. I believe that's the beginning of April. But uh, the Rebel, the Rebel as a seven-figure race is a race we have to talk about, Matt. And uh, not surprisingly, with this money, they drew 13 horses. You want to start from the rail out? Let's go. I'll take uh, I'll take that as a yes. Carbone, number one, Matt, is a speedy son of Matoli. Uh, won his first two starts nicely. Last time, though, he faded on a muddy track at Oakland in the southwest. Yeah, uh, one of, I think, three in the race for uh, Steve Asmussen was a open length, impressive winner of his first two starts. Total, I think, of like 12 lengths between those races. The second race was moving out to a mile for this son of Matoli, but in the southwest, Brian, uh, I don't know. It, it was a muddy, sealed track, and and uh, interesting things happened in there. Um, he was part of the pace and then faded out to finish seventh. Was it the muddy track or was it the uh, added distance with Carbone? Yeah, yeah, exactly what I was going to say, Matt. He he was pretty much after after being right on the lead uh, for much of the way. He was pretty much done on the turn and backed out pretty badly in a race won easily by Mystic Dan. I think we're going to say this a lot though about that track in the Southwest. Maybe a few horses deserve a second shot. Carbone's one to think about. Speed on the rail. Number two, Northern Flame. Matt is uh, one of two for Kenny McPeak, and, and I think both of them have a little, a little bit of interest in here. Northern Flame is two of seven, 
won a maiden at Churchill Downs, but participated reasonably okay in some stakes races last year, but comes off a win over the track last time. Yeah, uh, and and just, just a couple things about it. Earlier races, uh, his maiden win was in his third try, and that was over a good horse, uh, real men violin that we will see later on on the Derby Trail. But before breaking his maiden, he was fourth behind Carbone uh, in one of his early races. Yeah, yeah. Northern Flame has run against good uh, horses. There's no doubt about that. And he's got to win over the track. So uh, one one horse to watch a little bit. Uh, I guess that that's true of the one and, and possibly the three. Uh, I'm looking at McPeak and Hernandez thinking there's a reason BJ Hernandez is on this horse. Common Defense was actually a long shot I liked to get Son of Care can tie uh, a little bit in the Southwest. And, and maybe he's the horse I most want to see if he can bounce back. He was fifth not threatening fifth in the Southwest last time as a long shot. He'll be a long shot again. If you can excuse the muddy uh, performance in the Southwest, he had a nice maiden win the start before. Yeah. If it was the money sealed track, in fact, Brian, uh, uh, common defense is, uh, has my concerns like a couple other horses in this field uh, coming off of a nice maiden victory which came with first time Lasix and then went into the Southwest or, or another race stakes race had to go without the Lasix and, uh, and digress. Was it that for common defense or was it the muddy seal track? Or was it the classic competition? Yeah. All good questions with common defense, but I'm willing to throw him in a little bit as a long shot here, Matt, uh, coming off the muddy race, maybe on a faster track, he can go back to a little bit better performance. Common defense will be a long shot for sure. I think the number four, Tejan Pass, will be a long shot as well. Chris Landeros is up on this Peter Miller trained horse who started his career out in California, ran several times out in California, in fact, with some stakes experience. He's got some speed. He's come over for Oakland. This is actually his third race at Oakland Park. Uh, this meeting, and uh, he hasn't won in the first two. This clearly the toughest spot yet. Yeah, uh, he had a second in a minor stakes race at Oakland Park, but uh, feels like a sprinter to me, Brian. Yeah, there, there's a couple of possible sprinters, maybe maybe even more than a couple possible sprinters in this mile in the 16th Rebel Field. So uh, that could add to a solid pace here. Magic Grant, I guess, would appreciate that, but we have no idea how good Magic Grant is. I, I said, yeah, maybe draw a line through the Southwest. He'll need that line because he was 10th by 27 some odd lengths in the Southwest. He had some decent form over in Remington, but I guess he would be the hardest Southwest horse to draw a line through and expect a decent performance here. I guess, Brian, uh, um, you know, he uh, broke his maiden in a stakes race in that Clever Trevor, which was a prep race for the springboard where uh, he ran OK. And uh, in that uh, uh, Southwest, uh, he broke really badly, but then really did absolutely no running uh, for the rest of that race. And I don't know, however you look at it, uh, his earlier races were pretty slow. Yeah, yeah. At Magic Grant, you could make a small case for from the Remington form if you forgive the muddy track, bad break, Southwest, but it, it's a little bit uh, reaching for straws maybe with the five Magic Grant. Six, I don't think you have to reach for straws so much. Uh, this is another Asmussen runner, as Matt mentioned. Steve Asmussen has three in this field, and, and Dimatic is a horse I'm watching. Dimatic, Dimatic is a horse I'm watching. He's a son of gun runner out of a tappet mare. He's really improved with each of his three starts, but he's never run against anything but maiden competition to date. Yeah, has improved. And, and certainly we know that was a characteristic of Gunrunner uh, uh, back in his day also uh, uh, and broke his, uh, 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 Dimatic broke his maiden in his third try by three lengths. That was on a sloppy and sealed track. Interestingly, blinkers go on here. Yeah, Blinkers go on, who a horse who's been rallying. He rallied to win that last race by three lengths. It was an impressive looking win visually. Uh, I just think he's a horse getting better. That was this distance, same distance, same track. 
that maiden win. As Matt mentioned, sloppy track, so you don't know if that had anything to do with it. But I'm kind of betting it, it doesn't. And he's just a horse really on the improve and an interesting horse. Notably, Tyler Gaffleone will be in the saddle on the six. Number seven is the class of the race, Matt. The uh, probable heavy favorite in this big rebel field is, of course, Timberlake. Timberlake was a big winner of his maiden second time out at Ellis Park, and he's done nothing but grade one since then. Yeah, and that that includes a victory uh, in the Champagne Stakes, which was on a wet track, and then a fourth place in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, uh, where uh, he ran well. I don't think everything went especially his way, but uh, it was a good race. Those two races both earned uh, uh, very, very strong speed figures, actually speed figures, which both of them are the same, and they are better than any other horse in this field. He comes back from a layoff after the Breeders, Breeders' Cup Juvenile. I guess that's a little bit of a concern. But the other side of it is that typically, you know, two-year-olds moving to be three-year-olds after, you know, three, four months off, often make a jump forward. And, and he's already got better speed figures from two. If he makes a jump up, uh, that's really going to make him the horse to beat. Yeah, it occurs to me we're talking about a lot of horses with wet track experience because Timberlake's biggest win, uh, it, he's only had two wins, but his biggest win, of course, came on uh, a, a real sloppy track at Aqueduct in that Champagne, grade one, mind you, in the Champagne. Uh, yeah, you're right. The, the hopeful wasn't a bad performance. The Breeders' Cup Juvenile wasn't a bad performance. He wasn't all that far away from second. Uh, finishing fourth behind fierceness. On the other hand, fierceness came back after a three-month layoff and 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 bombed in the Holy Bull, or at least got beat in the Holy Bull. So there is uh, reason to think that Timberlake uh, could be up against it in the thirteen-horse field, making his first start in nearly four months now as a heavy favorite. But uh, yeah, at his best, uh, he, he will be tough. That's for sure. Number eight, Matt, is a, uh, one of those uh, Keith DeSormo long shots that we see so often in these races. Next level. Uh, really threw in a bummer uh, when he tried the gun runner two starts back, but came back with a decent performance last time at Oakland Park. Yeah, and he had strange uh, race pattern in uh, in his early starts where uh, he ran in three stakes races, two of them grade ones, Brian, as a maiden. And then finally, after after all that, did break his maiden in a regular maiden, especially in his fifth try. But uh, uh, yeah. Uh, with those races against better horses, I would have expected a better performance in the gun runner. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's a horse who might have some ability, and he's also running oddly in that sometimes he shows speed, sometimes he comes out of it. You don't know what you're going to get, but there's just too many probably red flags there to tap him as a, as a real live long shot. Third Steve Asmussen runner, Matt, is a horse with some talent. Uh, in fact, Steve Asmussen has his son Keith, uh, in the saddle for uh, Laganos. Laganos uh, has looked good at times, has the son of Cantheros. I think he's got some speed as well. Kent, uh, Laganos was uh, a winner uh, of a, a nice uh, race at allowance race at Churchill Downs a couple starts ago. Faded a little bit out of the Smarty Jones last time. Yeah, and, and an interesting kind of horse. Uh, uh, when you look at all of his races for a horse coming from the barn of Steve Asmussen, in that he broke his maiden on the turf, Brian, at, yeah. at Kentucky Downs, and, and then later on, uh, uh, in an allowance race that he won at Churchill, it was a race that was meant for the turf, but came off and ran and went on the main track. Maybe that turf start had to do with the breeding, you know, being a son of Can Cantheros, but certainly unusual for Asmussen. Yeah, yeah. It, it, this is another horse like Carbone, who, who I see is talent. I, I do wonder about the distance, though, Matt, and he's another horse who, who shows some speed. Maybe this is a good time to bring up the time form U.S. pace projector for the Rebel. Uh, it, pretty important with 13 horses there that we expected to see that fast pace button lit up, Matt. Uh, and there it is. There's a lot of horses with speed in here. We haven't talked about the outside horse, but there's uh, uh, Timberlake, the, the, the clear favorite, and uh, some of the Asmussen horses as well. Tehan Pass from Peter Miller's barn, but you also got Carbone and you also got Laganus. And, and those five horses 
that makes me think that the pace will be pretty strong on Saturday. Yeah, I think it's another one of these uh, time form pace projectors that get a fast pace uh, uh, pretty much based on the quality of the field. Quality of the field, but also some sprint uh, influence here as well. We're, we'll talk about the 13 more in a minute, but uh, let's jump back in the line. Number 10 is is Mena. You see Mena is pretty far back in this pace projector. Mena uh, has been running against cheaper. Last time, though, he did give Northern Flame something to think about before Northern Flame said, no, you're not getting by me in deep stretch in that uh, Oakland Park allowance race. Yeah, that was a neck loss to uh, Northern Flame and talking about uh, uh, the uh, the the quality of Mena, uh, he was claimed for thirty thousand uh, dollars early on in his career. It's claimed for Brad Cox uh, uh, out of that race, which he won. He came back to win a starter allowance, but yeah, it's hard to get past that thirty thousand dollar claim. Yeah, he's uh, probably a horse worth more than thirty grand, and his last race is decent, but. Hard to pick him out with all these options in here. Number 11, Just Steel. I was surprised to see the Oaklawn Park morning line that had Just Steel as a 7-2 to two second choice. I guess he could be the second choice in here off of his accomplishments, but uh, I just can't imagine him jumping from 10-1 to one last time where he was second, second by eight lengths in the Southwest Stakes to being all of a sudden 7-2 to two in this huge field. Yeah, and, and from D. Wayne Lucas, uh, he's got nine starts. That's not surprising. And uh, maybe the uh, odds maker uh, at Oakland was zooming in on his last three races, which seemed to be the best races for Just Steel. So in his recent form, he's got a win uh, in a stake at Churchill Downs. Uh, he was second in the Smarty Jones and second in the Southwest. So uh, that's three nice performances. Three three nice performances. And I didn't mean to put down Just Steel. I just don't think he'll be seven to two in here. That, sprint st that stakes win, of course, came in a sprint. And uh, last time he last two times he really didn't threaten catching freedom or uh, uh mystic dan as i said he was beat eight lengths last time in that southwest but certainly uh one of the more accomplished horses in the field and a horse who is yeah as matt said he's on the right track of late number 12 is woodcourt woodcourt is a son of ransom uh, ransom the moon uh he's one he's also run nine races matt um uh, cheaper cheaper for sure um, he's coming out of a decent allowance performance last time. Yeah, decent allowance performance, Brian. And interestingly, that was his first start for New Connection, who claimed this horse for $50,000 from an optional claiming allowance race where they dropped the horse in for $50,000. Yeah, he's, he's run a bunch of good races, uh, but just like I said with Mena, too many good options here to get really excited about Woodcourt, I would think. Number 13 is an interesting horse. Uh, Ronnie Moquette brings us this son of Omaha Beach named Time for Truth. He drew way outside in the 13 hole, Matt, but he's fast. He might be the speed of the speed. Remember, Time Form U.S. pace projector uh, had him on the lead on a fast pace, and that's because he's run two fast sprints, a, a maiden win, and uh, stakes race at Oakland Park, where he finished second, both at six furlongs, and both he showed a lot of speed. Yep, from trainer Ron Moquette, two sprints, hasn't tried a longer race, so uh, uh, I guess there's a, a chance that he can handle the distance, and with that sprint speed from the outside, uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to go fast to the lead. Yeah, that, he, he's a big reason why I think this will be a pretty darn fast pace in the Southwest, uh, not to mention the other speed horses in the race. All right, Matt, uh, we've talked about a lot of horses in Saudi Arabia and Arkansas. Let's get to our top picks now. I'll let you go first. As always, we'll start with the Saudi Cup, 20 million bucks. Yeah, tough race, tough field, lots of quality uh, that we talked about in our in our rundown. I am certainly... Brian rooting for the American team. I am rooting for White Abario and the, the continuation of the Rick Dutrow comeback 
story. Um, but uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, as the favorite in this field, it's going to be tough. It, it, it's it's a tough race to handicap. I'm going to go with one of the Japanese horses. The uh, Japanese horse won this race uh, last year at big odds. I'm not going with real big odds. I'm going to go with Lemon Pop and his really good recent form. I know it's speed against speed, but uh, uh, it's tough to separate them. Yeah, I, I couldn't pick Lemon Pop for that reason. There's there's too much speed in this race for me, but Lemon Pop has proven to be a really, really classy individual, the son of Lemon Drop Kid, 10 of 14 lifetime, the Japanese Dirt Horse of the Year last year. I'm going with another Japanese horse. I think the race sets up for ralliers, and, and the two that most made sense to come from off the pace to me were Senor Buscador and Ushbar Tesaro. I think Ushbar Tesaro has a little bit more class than Senor Buscador, so he'll be my top choice. I'm betting uh, this race on my pace projection, which is lots of speed and somebody's going to pick up the pieces. In the Rebel, Matt, uh, I, I think it's Timberlake against the rest. Timberlake should be us approaching even money, but it looks like you think he's just too tough. Yeah, and this is a, I don't think we mentioned that Timberlake is trained by Brad Cox, and maybe this is Brad Cox's best horse on the Derby Trail. We shall see. This is certainly not a feel like the Saudi Cup where there's so much quality in, in the field. Quite the opposite. It's hard for me to go against Timberlake. Yeah, for me, it's a matter of two-year-old and three-year-old form. I don't know that Timberlake will come back big as a three-year-old, and I'm not willing to to bet on that happening uh, after almost four months as a pretty heavy favorite. But I can't disagree with Matt that Timberlake's two-year-old form stands over this field. I think there might be some good horses, though, that develop out of this rebel. And one of them, in fact, the one I'm most excited about is, is one of Asmussen's trio, and that's Dynatic. Dynamic again, a son of gun runner and tap it. He can pass horses. He's one at the distance over the track. And I think he's really improving at the right time. So he'll be my top pick for a, a little bit of an upset in the rebel stakes. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed our look at a $20 million race in Saudi Arabia, a $1.25 million race in Oakland Park. Matt, let me get a party shot from you, my friend. Wow, that's a lot of horses, uh, Brian. Hey, do you know what when this Saudi Cup will be uh, run in terms of American time, Matt. I didn't. I didn't uh, check the American post time yet. I, I know it'll be early, the first half of the day, but I don't know how early. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. I. I, I didn't check uh, either. There. There hasn't been much information on the uh, uh, American side uh, about the uh, past performance and things like that. Anyway, uh, uh, enjoy the weekend of racing, uh, everybody. And as always, thanks for watching the show. Yeah, we sure do appreciate you watching the show. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, we urge you to do that for Matt and I. It helps us out. Turn on the notifications. Leave us a comment. Also, of course, thank you to our friend Candace Curtis in the home office for the race graphics. Derby Wars is our sponsor, the best contest site out there. Check them out as well. And of course, thank you to Time Form US for their pace projectors that we use each and every week here on Horse Center. Next week, we'll be back on the Kentucky Derby Trail map, but we'll be staying home. Until then, everyone, good luck at the races. I hope you have a good weekend. We'll see you soon right here on Horse Center.